Hello and welcome to the third episode of our Seven Days to Die tutorial series. I'm Skill Incarnate and we're headed back to our temporary base that we built in episode two because today we're going to be doing something that should make our base a little bit more safer. We're going to do some um, we're going to do some fortification and if I get time I'm going to go over some basic cooking with you. Um, cooking is a as is with Project Zomboid, it's a, it's a very uh, it's a very involved process, and there is a multitude of different food items you can make. I'm just going to concentrate on the the simple stuff, the stuff you can eat just to keep you going, keep you alive. Uh, at the moment, I've got some potatoes. I'm just smashing down raw potatoes. Uh, unlike real life, you can actually eat raw potatoes in this game, and it won't won't actually affect you. Uh, I've, I've never tried to eat a heap of raw potatoes before, but in any case, that's what we're doing. Now have a look here. We've actually come across a mine. This is the mine we were talking about earlier. You've got to be careful about those. The reason why I mention it is I could have um, I could have just done a swan dive right into the bottom of that mine. And I would have actually broken both my legs. <clears throat> so you always want to be want to be aware of where you're running. As we're going, I'm I'm collecting some some stuff. I'm checking all the rubbish bins, these rubbish piles. And what I'm looking for is tins, empty tins, because we're going to need those to do some some water boiling. Now, when in the last episode we were looking in town for a cooking pot, a cooking pot would allow us to boil water in the the jars. It's not essential. It's uh, it's something that we can actually uh, we can <clears throat> get by without. So I would normally go into the town and continue looting, but the object of this tutorial series is to get you as quickly used to survival and getting a base as you can. Now have a look over there. That's a zombie horde. Now they look pretty impotent at the moment. They're slow. I could run away from those guys. Now they're coming from the direction of our other base. So the reason why I'm saying that is if we had have stayed in that base, those guys would have ripped that base apart like tissue. So my advice is when you're building a base, it's a calculated risk, but in most cases, do you see that house up there? I would have actually, if, if I didn't have my, my pretty safe base nearby, I would have actually climbed up on top of that roof and I would have stayed in that house. Do you see that house there? Someone's actually, that looks like it's a player built house, so we're, we're not going to go and smash that open. Yeah, see that? So that's some players actually gotten in there and they've actually built the house up. They've knocked the floor out and this would be a reasonably place, safe place to, to hide out. Now, I don't know what's happened there. It looks like some other players actually dynamited the house. So someone's actually blown their house up and, and come in and looted it. Now normally because it's abandoned I'd probably go in and see if there's anything of use but I personally I don't go around smashing other people's bases that's just me that's what makes me a poor day Z player but um, you know that, that, that's it but <clears throat> we're gonna head back to our base now the last thing that I was gonna say is if you're gonna build a base and I didn't send, mention this in the last tutorial if you're gonna build a base always try and build it out of the way try not to build it close to other players bases because you never know when you're gonna get a dick like the guys who, who destroyed that guy's base who, who most likely destroyed it you wanna try and stay away from other players and this game is one of those games is fantastic co-op so if you got a mate get him in there You'll build stuff twice as fast. If if I had had my buddy Probo X in here, we've smashed down a base in a day. Like we would have got that base done in half the time. We'd have some. We we would have had defenses and everything up and running. We would would have been pretty safe staying there. 
But in, in any case, um, I digress. We're headed back to our base now. We picked up some supplies on the way, and what we're, our goal today is to make this base fortified, to make this base safe, and have plenty of defences to at least stop anything but the largest hordes getting in. <clears throat> So first thing, let's pretend we've woken up, we've come out of this base, and we, we, it didn't get destroyed or get damaged, and we're going to get out. Um, we've got our food from the last episode, got some raw meat, got some, um, got some bottled water, don't have a lot of that, but we also have, very importantly, we have our empty tins, and we're going to go over getting, getting water for that in a second. <clears throat> so... What we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to run up to the snow, and we're going to grab some. We're going to grab some water, because by now you probably burned through all your water bottles, and you're going to be thirsty. You're going to be hungry. It's now day three, so you're probably nearly starving. So let's get up into the snow, and I'm going to show you how to make a shovel. Now, one thing about the snow biome I mentioned in the first episode, you will freeze and die here super fast. So get in, get what you need, get out before you get too cold. And if you start in this biome, you want to hot tail it out as fast as possible before you, you freeze. So, we'll be making some bullets, but um, that's going to be a future tutorial. Go to your building tab, the second tab, and type in, I actually might be the tools tab, I apologise, tools, the fifth tab in, and you want to shovel, shovel. Now, <clears throat> you won't have any iron like I've got, I've got this forged iron, you'll only be able to make a stone shovel. So for a stone shovel you need three stones, three plant fibres and three wood. Again, these are all the, the ingredients you use to make a stone axe, so you should have a an abundance of these. You can see there there's another pack of zombies over there. Now one thing I should mention, snow zombies or zombies that originate in the snow biome are twice as strong as normal zombies. You don't want to fight these guys or if you do you want to have a plentiful supply of arrows. The other thing that spawns in these snow biomes are dogs and they will spawn in packs and they will wreck you. Even with a pistol I've been killed by dogs because they will spawn in packs of 30 or more. In any case, find a patch of snow, start digging. Even with the crappest stone shovel, you should be able to get at least 10 snow. See I'm digging up all this snow? Yeah. Now obviously we're running on a time clock, it's now 8.30 in the morning. We want to get this done as quick as possible. I'd probably recommend 10 snow, or at the moment, let's see how much we've got. We've got 20 snow, let's just grab 30, just to be safe. Think of this as a portable water source. You can go to water and you can fill this up, but the beauty of having snow is you can actually store this away and then melt melt this snow down as you get thirsty and just keep filling up your water bottles with the snow. This is the best source of water until you actually get a, like if you're living next to a creek and you can get out and you can fill up buckets of water, you can carry buckets around with you, but uh, just for the moment, because we're close to snow, let's use that snow. We've got it, we might as well use it. We're heading back to base. Now you probably at this point you've eaten all of your food, but we, as you remember we've got the raw meat from the last episode. There's some more tin food, let's eat that. You always want to grab those torches. You can attach torches to guns. If you've got the torch in your inventory, you can turn it off. Like so. If you don't have a light source like one of our torches that we made in the last episode, this one here, you can, you can pick up a torch and you can carry it around and it'll light things up. I always recommend you carry one of these torches though, because you never know when you're going to get stuck in the dark and you need a light source. And they're, and they're placeable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cook some food up so that we don't starve. Now I purposely, I haven't made an entrance into the base. That's to make it as hard as possible for zombies to get in and as hard as possible for other players to get in. 
So we're going to build the most basic, basic thing that we use to cook, which is a campfire. Go into your basics tab, the first one on the left, select campfire, select craft. Okay, we've got some... Let's just uh, clear some space. And what can we throw out? I don't want to throw our bullets out. Drop our ladder. Okay, as with all items that you can place, put the campfire into one of your hotkeys on your belt. Right click to place. Bam, we now have a fire. Now, there are three tools that you can use in the campfire. The cooking pot allows you to make the high tier food like boiled water, uh, boiled eggs, boiled meat, just and also uh, corn on the cob, and s several other items. This is your top tier item and your most valuable cooking item. You can find cooking pots in town. You'll find them in any kitchen area. They're the most common places to find them. You'll find them in ovens and you'll find them in, in uh, kitchens, uh, the, the kitchen cupboards. That's why we go into town to get one of those. Now, we weren't lucky, so we didn't get a, a, a cooking pot, but I grabbed the next best thing, which is an empty can. So we're going to go over boiling water. So we put some wood in our fire. Now, when you put wood in the fire, you'll get a value next to this fuel. Do you see this fuel value here? And you'll have a counter. So that's oh, I have two minutes and forty seconds worth of fuel. Now, if you're like me, you've smashed down heaps of wood, so you're going to have plenty of fuel for your fire. Now we're going to boil some water because we need to boil some water because we're thirsty. So, the easiest way to boil water is to either get one of these empty cans to go up to a water source, so go up to a to a, um, a creek or, or somewhere, and then right click and you'll be able to fill this full of water. But in our case we have snow, so we're going to... Unfortunately there's a bit of a bug in the game at the moment, where there's a massive delay when you actually go out of the... the stove, uh, sorry, the campfire before you can craft again, so we're just going to wait for that to to clear. While we wait for that to... oh, there we go, it's working. So, we're boiling some of this snow, and to boil the snow, we need one item of snow, we have 30 obviously, and an empty can. We have an empty can. Let's boil some water. There you go. Let's boil some water for us. Let's drink that. Beautiful. So that's taking care of our thirst. We're not thirsty anymore. Let's make some meat. Now, without a grill and without a without a cooking pot, you can only make charred meat. Now, reading the description, charred meat is better than raw meat. It will dehydrate you but boost your wellness and it will attract zombies. It's not perfect, but it's all we can make at the moment. Let's cook that. Now, there's three different tiers of meat. There's the charred meat, which we can make without a tool. So we don't have any tools in our inventory. Where we're just basically burning the meat. We're putting it in our inventory, and we're eating it. There we go. To eat food, put it in one of your eight, your eight item slots, and right, select the food with the, your number key. So it's in slot eight. We've selected eight. Right click to eat it. There we go. Beautiful. So now you can see our hunger's at 51. So we're, we've now we've cooked food and we've cooked water and we've eaten and we're, we're, we're not hungry, we're not thirsty, we're, we can go for another day. Let's make some defenses for our base. Let's start with some spikes. So go to the fifth tab in, Tools and Traps, and you'll be able to make your most basic but useful trap, spikes. So if, let's have a look down here. It may have changed, actually. I'll have to find it for you. Here it is. So, apologies. Spikes are now uh, not listed as a trap for some reason. They're listed under the building tab, which is the second one from the left. Type in the word spike, and you'll find wood log spikes. So, to make a wood spike, these are the weakest traps in that they do the least amount of damage, but they don't break. You can also make basic wood spikes. So we're going to make both of these today. I'm going to show you how they both work. 
We've made some wood spikes. Now these are, you know, if you've ever watched any Vietnam movies, these are uh, equivalent to, you know, your Viet Cong style punji stick traps. You place these down, and they basically, if you, I'm going to run into it. Oh, oh there we go. See, I've, I've, I've actually hurt myself. I'm bleeding out as a result of that. There we go, a little bit better. That's okay. So when you when you actually you can see how I've run up to that and I've actually injured myself. Now the one thing about these these traps is that they will break after extended use. Every time a zombie walks over this, he'll actually degrade the trap until it eventually disintegrates. So you will have to constantly replace your traps. Not a big deal when you chop down thousands of wood, you can just make a, a, a heap of these and just keep popping them down. But my preferred, I don't use these because they degrade very fast. The only reason why you want to use these is if you don't have a lot of wood. The one you want to use is the wood log spikes. So go to your building tab and type in spike and it will bring up all your spike traps. So you basically got your two, your wood spikes and your wood log spikes. These are way more expensive. Wood spikes are four, four um, wood to create. Wood log spikes are 30. I don't care. These are, these are a very good, very good uh, long-term solution and they don't need to be replaced as often. So let's make a heap of them. While we're doing that, we're just clearing out the, the grass around the base because this is where we're going to be put, putting our spikes. I'm going to move this so I don't actually hurt myself again. There we go. We're just chopping down this tree because we're going to um, we're going to put some spikes there. And here we have some spikes. Let's put them down. So what I generally do is I put these around the outside of my base. That means that any zombie that comes up and starts wailing away at my base will immediately start taking damage. What I tend to do is I dig a trench, like so. Now I'm cheating. I'm using my, uh, my iron shovel. But uh, again, this can be done using a stone shovel. And this is probably what you're going to have to do. To be honest, I find that for the first three days, you're probably not going to have a static base. You're going to be going back to town, or you're going to be hiding out here and just, just praying that zombies don't find you. It's, uh, it's just the luck of the draw. I was, I was actually very lucky. I managed to hide in town. And I had uh, I had a pretty good run. I didn't have zombies uh, rolling up on me, and I I managed to uh, have a have a pretty easy time of it. But I built my base underground. I'm not going to go into underground bases into a future tutorial because it's actually quite a complex thing to set up and very time consuming. Way more time consuming. You can see that in two days we've basically set up this base. Now, once you set up a basic spike on the ground, they'll break very fast. These spikes are like the wooden, the uh, the wooden frames. Once you pop the spike on the ground, so walk up to where you want to put the spike down, place it with the right mouse button, like so. Get out your your stone axe, right click on the spike, point your cursor over the spike, right click. You've upgraded that spike. Now, with our our iron. You can see how we've got some scrap iron. We can upgrade it further. See, we put a metal metal uh, metal tip on the end of that spike. Now, early in the game, you're not going to have enough iron to do this to all the spikes. So, what I recommend you do is just create, upgrade them once. You can see this is just costing us wood. It's just wood. We got we're in the middle of a forest. We've got plenty. It's just going to be time consuming. You can hear that we've got some zombies coming. And we're gonna we're gonna let them come. I'm not gonna kill that zombie. I'm gonna show you what the the spikes do to them. Let's just uh, lure this guy over here. He's gonna fall into that trench and he's gonna start. He's taking damage. See, that's hurting him. 
You can see it's slow. It's very slow. It's not going to kill him, but it's slowing him down. And that's what we need to do. These spikes will slow them down. They'll damage their legs. And in most cases, you'll probably find they'll actually take his legs out. It's taking a while. For best effect, you really want two rows of these. Let's put him out of his misery. Now, we've got an empty bottle. We'll take that. We can't use those yet, but we're not too concerned because we have our, our tin and we have 30, 30 units of snow so we can use our tin and snow to just keep making as much water we, as we need. It's not ideal and um, the, main, the main problem with tins is you can't stack them which means that like I, you can see I'm carrying 8 bottles of water you can't do that with the tin, you have to, um, you have to carry each tin individually It's now getting late in the day. Luckily I cheated and I have plenty of wood. There we go. Oh. You can see those spikes don't hurt as much as the other ones. But they are renewable and easy to to replace. And they lo they last longer than the other wooden spikes. So let's pop these down. Oh. Let's get rid of that because that's in the wrong spot. So what I'm doing is I've now got a row 360 degrees all around my, my home. I won't lie, again, this is not going to repel a full horde. This may get rid of maybe half a dozen or at the most maybe eight zombies. If you get a full feral horde, like I'm talking 20 or 30 zombies, you're going to have a bad time. But again, that there's not a lot we can do about that. It's a luck of the draw. So... There's our basic defense. I'm not going to go into explosives and other things that you can do. I'm just going to have a, I'm just going to have some painkillers because I, I hurt myself on those spikes. Um, the last thing that we're going to do to make this base really, really tough, and and what I would normally do is do like I'd dig this out a bit further and I'd put more spikes down. Like I'd have. I'd put another spike there and I'd do another row and that would make this place really secure. The other thing you could do is smash up some of these rocks and use the metal that you get to put some metal tips on these spikes. So see those metal tips? And there you go, you can make of so I just use twenty of my scrap iron to make a iron spike. So this is what you want to do to make your base really safe. You would upgrade this and then put down iron spikes. So get a, a heap of scrap iron from either going into a mine, like the mine that we just passed, but the easiest way is to go and smash up these rocks and get metal. You can smash these rocks up and you can get the stones that you need for your arrows and you can also get metal. And it's a, it's a nice non-risky way to, to get yourself some metal without having to go into town. So we're smashing up this rock here. And we're just upgrading this. There we go. So that just makes that, the, the, the more you upgrade these spikes, the more damage they do. So the last thing we're going to do for the day to make this base really, really safe is to build some of those normal spikes. So these are the disposable spikes. They're not great. They're not going to last forever, but they are going to give us an added measure of security. And they're really quick to build. You see how fast I'm smashing those out? Now the last thing, we, we're now going to have a bit of trouble getting into our base. So we're going we're gonna to do... I'm going to show you a trick that I use to make, to make an entrance into my base. I do this. I build a little bit of a 
an entryway. Build this post here. We'll make a ladder. Now there's a lot of variations on this and a lot of people actually don't like this approach. Um, and I'm sure that a few people will think that this is not the, the ideal way to do it. And um, I actually welcome... Um, I'm, I, I, I welcome criticism, I welcome any uh, advice people have to give on base defence. I'm not an expert in it. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a noob either. But uh, it'd be interesting to see in the comments what people's uh, what people's thoughts are on base defence. This is just what I do. So you see how we get up on this 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 uh, little podium here. We then get out our our wooden frames. We pop a frame down. You don't even need to do that. You can just actually just jump over. You see that? Now zombies can't do this. But just be aware the players can. So if you end up with a hostile player, he will come up and use that entrance, jump in here, and probably sit out here with a gun waiting to, to put a put a round in the head. So you, you have to be a bit careful, and that's one of the risks of an above ground base. And there's not really a lot you can do about that. It's just you know people are, are dicks, and the um, you will find in this game they will they will attack you. It's just even on a PVE server. So I'm putting down my disposable spikes. So this is making a double layer of protection. There we go. Now again, this is temporary. But I guarantee you, it will it will take all but the the most uh, robust of zombies to, to get through this. It's gonna this will stop anything but a full horde. It's worked for me, and it should work for you. The most important thing about this is if you do get a horde in the night. As long as they're, you know, they're not too big, you want to try and be out here and try and be killing them if you've got your bow. Um, don't sit inside your base. Uh, it, in some cases, obviously, it, 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 you're not really going to be able to make much of a difference. But what I tend to do is I, if, if I tend to sit outside on the roof, and if I see any zombies... Uh, I, I will try and take them out. If it's one or two, and I know that they can't get into the base, I won't actually attack them. But um, there you go. So let's recap. What we've done today is dig a trench around our base, fill the trench with wood log spikes, the strong spikes which take a while to degrade. We've upgraded the wood spikes to metal spikes. And then finally, as a finishing touch, we've added a row of these disposable wood spikes, the, the weak wood spikes around our base. So we now have a double layer of spikes around our base. The finishing touch is this podium, which we will be using to jump over our spikes and easily get in and out of our base nice and safe. What I'd normally do is just maybe widen this a bit so that we can we don't have to be so precise when we jump. Might do this from ground level. There we go. So now you've got a nice big wide area. You just jump over the top. Nice and safe. I can do this all day. I better stop before I, I jinx myself and end up doing a swan dive into the spikes. But um, that's it for this episode. So the other thing we went over in this episode was cooking. So I showed you how to cook raw meat. And I showed you how to, to make simple boiled water. The ingredients for for making f basic food and water that you can find in these woods quickly and easier. I've showed you that with a bow and a few arrows you can easily kill a deer. And I mean this is a good bow, but I've done it with a you know a, a, a one quality bow easily enough. Aim for the head, shoot the deer with the bow. If you if you haven't got anything else, you can use this this stone axe, smash the body up and take the meat. And then all you have to do is build yourself a fire, 
go into your base. Here's our fire. A campfire is just, I, I believe it's just nine, nine stone. You, you'll have heaps of this, yeah. Oh, sorry, eight stone. So that's easy to do. We don't have any tools for this fire. You don't need them. All you need is an empty can and a bit of snow. Now, if we weren't near the snow, all you'd need is an empty can and, and um, a bit of water. Now, we're really close to the snow here, and um, I'm going to start heading back to base now. But um, I, I might actually start living in this base. We might see. Well, at the moment, it's not it's not secure enough for my liking, so we're not going to we're not going to risk it for the moment. But um, I, I guess that one last thing I have to say is. Uh, that that that's the that's the not the model I follow anymore for building a base. That's what I used to do when building a base. Um, as of late, I found on a lot of PVE servers, and I have to address the this uh, is hackers. Now, I I I hate hackers. Hackers have they haven't ruined this game, but they have hurt this game quite a lot, and I. I'm not profiling. I'm, I, I have to basically say that every hacker I've seen is either from China or from Korea. Now these these people from Asian areas, they join a server, they can fly around, they go into can go into people's bases and unlock all the doors. You're basically helpless, and these guys will wreck you. Now, I'm on an Australian server. And I know the guys that own this server. One of them is one of my friends in real life, and he polices this server, you know, really, really heavily. But you you have to be careful on other servers. Building a base like that isn't something that I would normally do. Um, I probably would on this server, but what I did in, in on this server was build an underground base. And the reason why you build one of those bases is because these guys have trouble finding them. They because they can fly around the whole map. And I mean, look, they can. They might. I've they've found one of my my bases before, but I I tend to I tend to build a base underground, and then once I've sussed out the server and I've played for a few months, I might actually move up to ground level, because it, it's a bit cheap underground. You can pretty much live there forever, and nothing can really get you. But um, you know, obviously the zombies can eventually get down to your level, but it, it, unfortunately. I don't want to. I don't want to put people off this game, and I'm not saying that you know hackers are everywhere, but that they are a problem in this game. And the once the admins get onto them and get get rid of them, that's good. But some some servers are, are worse than others, and I'm I'm like some some servers are really horrible for hackers, and it really pisses me off that the people are, you know, they they're ruining the game by by hacking and by ruining the experience for other people. But anyway, that, that's my winch for the day. A anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I, I think this is a really useful thing to know. You need to know how to make good defences for your base. If you're going to be having a base top side, you need to be able to defend your base. And making those, the, making it as hard for the zombies to get in as possible is definitely something that, that I didn't know how to do. I, I was actually trying to live in town and getting overrun every single time and wondering why. I didn't know about, about you know, the, the custom building and using frames to build a basic structure like what I've got here. But basically, you want to you want to do that because... It's it's your chances of getting attacked outside of town are less, and also more importantly, it makes it harder for players to find you. And and the third and final thing is, um, you can make an awesome farm like this. I mean, look at this. This is awesome. I I wouldn't be able to do this if I was living in town. Someone would come in and would steal all my crops. And look, this is topside. Someone probably could steal my crops, really. I, there's not really a lot I, I could do about it. But um, you can see here, I've got I've got quite a nice little um, nice little collection here. I have uh, I have plenty of coffee. I have uh, you know fields of <laughs> fields of food. And if you know my Project Zomboid uh, playthroughs, you'll know that I I have a, a bit of a uh, fondness and an aptitude for farming. And this game certainly allows you to do that. 
But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and join me in the next one. We might uh, touch on a bit of looting. I'll, I'll show you how to get into town and, and what to look for and what what to what to to toss. A lot of people don't know what stuff is important, what stuff isn't at, at the start of the game. So we might go over that next. But again, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave me uh, your comments. Please like this video. And um, I'd love to get some subscribers because the more subscribers I get, the more more comments and the more feedback that we get. And um, the more ideas we get for more episodes and series. So until next time.